All right, guys, everybody's on quarantine lockdown at home, so good time to do some learning. What I'm going to talk about in this video is personally my favorite setup, a favorite, you know, amongst a lot of the traders in our group is the TTM squeeze. But we can't talk about the TTM squeeze without talking about John Carter. So John Carter, guys, is the creator of the TTM squeeze as well as the founder of Simpler Trading. In my opinion, one of the better options traders there is. So if you're an options trader and you're looking to learn, you got to check out John Carter. You got to check out Simpler Options. So big shout out to him. Again, he's the creator of the TTM squeeze, which we're going to cover in this video. So make sure you guys check him out. All right. Now, before we go any further, I want to show you guys how you can actually add the TTM squeeze indicator to your Thinkorswim platform. If you got another platform, uh, shit out of luck as far as me being able to help you out goes. But I am pretty sure it's available on TradeStation, a few other platforms. But for you Thinkorswim guys and girls, you're going to go to studies, add study. You are going to find Johnny Carter, John Carter studies. You are then going to get yourself the TTM squeeze. And now we're good to go. You got a TTM squeeze indicator down here, guys. When I have the TTM squeeze indicator, I also like to add some Bollinger bands. So that's the way I look at it, right? I get the Bollinger bands. I get the TTM squeeze down here. Technically, a squeeze is when the Bollinger Bands are contracting inside the Keltner channels. Now, that sounds like a lot. In plain English, guys, it's a consolidation. But as far as throwing the indicator onto your charts, John Carter studies TTM squeeze. I would suggest throwing up some Bollinger Bands as well. And now we're ready to get rocking as far as, you know, what the hell is a squeeze and why is it so dope? So as I mentioned, guys, the squeeze technically... A uh, stock is in a squeeze when the Bollinger Bands are contracting inside the Keltner channels. In plain English, a squeeze occur when a stock a squeeze occurs when a stock enters a tight consolidation on a given time frame. So here's the analogy I always use. I want you guys to picture a squeeze like a rubber band getting stretched. Right, the further and further and further you pull a rubber band, the more and more energy is getting pent up. You know, you stretch it far enough, that energy is going to get released as that rubber band snaps in half. A stock in a squeeze, guys, is much like that rubber band. When it's in that consolidation, it is getting stretched out. And all that energy is being pent up. What we're looking for is to play that move once the energy gets released and that stock breaks out of that squeeze, breaks out of that consolidation, whether it be to the upside or whether it be to the downside. Now, why is the squeeze set up itself? Right? And really more so a consolidation. Why is this a big deal for options traders? And at least, guys, the way I look at it, it's about timing and premium. You know, when a stock is in a squeeze, is a general statement the options on both sides of the chain are often going to be, you know, relatively at their cheapest with their lowest implied volatility. If you know you're somewhat familiar with options, you know if a stock's making a move towards the upside, calls a gain in value, puts a lose in value. If a stock's making a move to the downside, puts gain value, calls lose value. But it's a general statement when a stock is kind of just tightly chopping back and forth in a nice consolidation, that's when they're both pretty lackluster. Right? There's not big demand for the options. There's not big implied volatility. They're pretty damn cheap. So with the squeeze, guys, right, with proper timing, using the squeeze indicator, it allows us a chance to take our position in a consolidation prior to the move. Right? Once we can identify a squeeze, we, with a, long, you know, with a few other factors, can look to take our entries before the breakout to the upside or before the breakdown to the downside. Now, why is this a you know, benefit for us as an options trader? When we think about buying inside the squeeze, guys, like I mentioned, inside that squeeze, options are pretty cheap. But once the move takes place and the squeeze fires, whether it be to the upside, whether it be to the downside, the options are going to gain value simply from the directional move. So if you have calls and the stock breaks out, Obviously, as the stock gains value, your calls are going to gain value. But more importantly, guys, this goes back to when you bought the options. When you can buy those calls before the move takes place, inside that squeeze consolidation, the implied volatility hasn't started the spike yet. So when you buy the options before the move and the move takes place, you're getting them at their cheapest, and now you're reaping the benefits of that rapid spike in premium and implied volatility. Kind of think of this as a balloon, right? You're buying the options, you're buying the balloon before it gets all inflated. Another benefit of this, guys, is that when you're buying the options inside the consolidation before the move takes place, along with buying them at their cheapest, 
you already have what everybody is going to want. You've got the quote-unquote drug that everybody's going to be fiending for once the move starts. For example, NVIDIA is in a tight squeeze on the hourly chart. If you grab a couple calls inside that squeeze, once NVIDIA begins to fire, once it begins to break out, now everybody wants it. Right? Now you've got the whole herd, as I call it, rushing in to get those NVIDIA calls, implied volatility spikes, premium is getting pumped up through the roof. You already got them. So another benefit of buying inside the squeeze is that once the move takes place, you can sell into strength. As John Carter calls it, you can kind of feed the ducks. As I call it, you can feed the herd. You got them before the move took place. Once the move begins, you're gaining value on your option from the directional move as well as a spike in implied volatility. A lot of times, guys, once the breakout begins, if you got your position inside the squeeze, depending on the expiration, depending on your strike, you can be up 50 to 100% plus on your option before the breakout begins. So before everybody else wants it, you're already up 50 to 100%. So that's the benefit of buying the options inside of the squeeze. So here, guys, is actually an example from this week. Right? This was just on Thursday here. Picture perfect example of an hourly squeeze. So we've got Tesla up. We are on the hourly chart. We've got our Bollinger Bands. Now just visually, you can see the consolidation. Tesla gaps up along with the overall market, but unlike the rest of the market, Tesla never rolled over. It just started to consolidate, get really tight, really quiet, and you get the Bollinger Band squeezing. And then you can see down here, guys, at the TTM squeeze indicator itself, once you see those red dots, that tells you that the stock is in a squeeze on whatever given time frame you're looking at. So in this example, we got an hourly chart. TTM squeeze with these red dots is telling us that Tesla itself is in a squeeze. Now, as far as the TTM indicator goes itself, guys, the squeeze technically begins to fire when this here called the histogram turns to light blue and begins to scale to the upside. Now, to make this simple, what these light blue or red bars, right, if the squeeze is firing to the downside, what those are basically measuring, guys, is, you know, momentum over the last few bars. Or in other words, when these things begin to go blue, and the histogram begins to break to the upside, what that's telling you is that over the past, I think it's three, four, or five candles or so, and again, watch John Carter's videos to get the specifics of how this thing actually, you know, works mechanically, but when the histogram begins to fire to the upside, guys, what that tells you is that during the consolidation, the majority of the price action is buying. Or in other words, there's a sense of demand inside of the consolidation. If we can find an example of a squeeze that fired to the downside, let's see, let's see. Tesla hasn't been going down too much. Here's a good example of an hourly squeeze, guys, that fired to the downside. Right? Once these bars start going red to the downside, that tells you that the last few candles have been predominantly selling pressure. So again, you, you can identify the squeeze of the red dots, then you can follow the histogram, whether it starts breaking to the downside with red or breaking to the upside in blue, that basically tells you guys, right, is there buying taking place inside the consolidation? Is there selling taking place inside the consolidation? And according to, you know, not only what John Carter would say, but my experience with it. Once you get a tight squeeze, guys, and the histogram begins to fire, there's a high probability that the stock is going to make a breakout or going to fire in that direction. So we look at Tesla here, right? And one of the things I mentioned, guys, is that personally, I like to use the squeeze to get positions inside the consolidation. Now, in retrospect, right, in hindsight, we can look at this and say, you know, you could have just waited for the breakout. And once the squeeze fired, if you went long, right, you caught a nice 15, 20 point move. Why not just wait for the breakout? Two reasons. Again, once the breakout happens, and for those in the Focus Trades group, we watched this setup live on Thursday morning, Tesla started moving immediately at the open, guys. So right out of the gate, those calls are spiking in implied volatility. They're gaining premium. You're starting to run the risk of jumping into an inflated product, so to say. The other issue, guys, is that breakouts ain't always easy. The squeeze will fire and then fade back in a few times every now and then, and that can shake a lot of traders out. For example, you come jumping in very quickly that morning, guys, Tesla faded back inside the squeeze. A lot of people could have gotten shaken out. So when the move begins, once the breakout happens, 
you can get a lot of the head fakes associated with trading a breakout. But just remember, guys, as soon as the move starts, IV is spiking, premiums are spiking, those options are starting to get expensive. Who really can reap the benefits here, in the example of this Tesla trade, would have been the trader guys accumulating inside the consolidation on Wednesday. Right? No one's buying calls, no one's buying puts, the stock's not making a big move, nothing on either side of the chain is gaining any value. As a matter of fact, they're just getting cheaper due to premium decay. But who can really benefit from this squeeze firing on Friday, or Thursday rather, would have been the individual accumulating inside the squeeze. The calls were cheap, they were quiet, right? No one's rushing in, everything was nice and chill. Then Friday, uh, Thursday morning when the squeeze fires, boom. They're gaining premium, they're spiking in IV, and more importantly, here comes the herd. Thursday morning, everybody's looking for this breakout. Everybody is in such a rush to jump into this move. For those who already had their position, one, they got a cheap-ass price for it. Two, now they have gained a big return from a spike in IV, from simply premiums going through the roof. And third, you've got thousands of people knocking on your front door, willing and able to take those calls off your hands. The herd wants them, you can feed the herd. So that was a picture perfect example, guys, of a consolidation that ended up firing to the upside. Now, as far as you know, option returns, right? When you're looking at an hourly squeeze, you're looking for a short-term move. Meaning you don't take a 30-day till expiration entry, guys, in an hourly squeeze. One rule of thumb that Carter shares and seems to be pretty accurate to me is that once a squeeze fires, it'll last for about five, six to seven bars. So on an hourly chart, squeeze fires, you're looking for four, five, six hours of a move. Or in other words, you're looking for one day move. That's about it. So that kind of move right there, guys, in the example of Tesla, you know, this turned out to be a big one. Now, just to show you guys some of the potential here, let me just put this out there. It's not a trade I took, unfortunately. I messed up big time and missed this one. But if you had been accumulating um, the 560 calls inside the squeeze, they went up about 300% overnight. You could have gotten them for four bucks and change on Wednesday evening before the close. At the open the next morning, guys, they were up 3x. Because of that random, or not random, that rapid premium, getting pumped in as well as that spike in IV. So that's a picture perfect example. And there are so many different ways guys to trade squeezes. You know, let's look at an example of a squeeze right now in Microsoft. Beautiful squeeze on the hourly chart. It's been squeezing for a while now. The longer it squeezes, the better likelihood of there being a good move. What I also like about Microsoft guys is you got to squeeze on two time frames right now. You got to squeeze on the hourly chart as well as the dirty 30 down here. I like that a lot. The more time frames the stock is squeezing on, the better. So we've identified the squeeze visually with the Bollinger Bands as well as with the indicator itself. Now, how do we go about playing this, right? Do we buy calls? Do we buy puts? You know, what's the thought process here? For me, guys, it all starts with overall market direction. So when I look at the SPY right now, Again, if I'm looking at an hourly squeeze, I'm looking for a day trade. I'm looking for a trade that's going to last a few hours. So I want to make sure, are we in a market that could at least give me a few hours of strength right now? And if we look at the market itself, guys, on the daily chart, you know, we're getting a nice little shift in momentum towards the upside right now. So the market is looking good. Obviously, we'll have to see how Monday morning goes. But we've got some decent momentum to the upside here for the market. Wouldn't be out of the question, right? Wouldn't be asking too much for us to see some decent strength this week. So the market could potentially be supportive of a breakout to the upside in a tech stock like Microsoft. Now, what about Microsoft itself, right? Is it looking ugly? Is it looking strong? How's the momentum as of late? And what we can see, guys, is that Microsoft has got some really nice momentum as of late. More importantly, it held up pretty damn well after gapping up this week where most names ended up filling that gap to the downside. So the market is showing us some decent momentum right now. We can expect a little bit more strength potentially, so it isn't crazy for us to be looking for a breakout to the upside in Microsoft. 
the stock itself is showing us over the past week or so some really decent momentum and we're not going to take a look at this now guys but you can take my word for it last week Microsoft was one of those tech names getting hit pretty damn hard in the options market we like to look at options flow in the group Microsoft was one of those names seeing a lot of repeat buying into the calls so let's just say we are going to look at this one as an opportunity to the upside taking into consideration the strong call flow taking into consideration what appears to be some decent momentum and taking into consideration the fact that we do have a market right now if we take a look at ES which is actually in the process of getting ready to break its own daily squeeze you can see we just started guys a very short team squeeze here on the daily chart that momentum as you can see right here is starting to shift towards the upside so I like potentially taking a move here to the upside in Microsoft now quickly we'll jump into how could you play this now the first thing we should cover guys is what can we expect again we're looking at an hourly chart we ain't looking for you know a swing trade here we're looking for a short-term break of a consolidation as energy gets released most likely to the upside so as far as targets right how far could this stock move where should we look to take profits that's where I use in you know my brother guys who handles the day trading here in the group big time you know advocate of the average true range the ATR I got a few videos on ATR on my channel you can search those guys if you want to learn more about it and how to add it to your thinkorswim plain English ATR tells us how much a stock has moved on average up or down over the past 14 sessions Microsoft's ATR is just about nine bucks guys eight dollars and fifty cents for the sake of conversation let's round up and call it ten bucks on average over the past two weeks Microsoft's been giving you 10 points up, 10 points down. So with a close at 165 on Friday, an average move would take us towards 170, 175. So what I would go do, guys, is mark half of an ATR, right around 170. And then you can also go mark up a full ATR, which is up here at 175. Now, personally, with a name like Microsoft, if we take a look at the daily chart, guys, Microsoft isn't typically a huge mover, right? Its ATR is a bit elevated right now because of the giant swings we've seen as a result of the market. Not so much Microsoft itself as an individual stock. So as volatility is dying in the market, as average volume is starting to kind of return to some normalcy, I wouldn't necessarily look for the full 10-point move in something like Microsoft. It can move nicely, and hell, maybe it does move to 10 points. But given the fact, guys, that volatility is starting to die down, you know, things are getting a bit more calm in the market. While I do think we could see some upside strength for a little bit, at least the next few weeks, I don't think we're going to see ridiculously strong moves, right? I don't think we're going towards highs. So all of that to be said, personally, I would look for about half the average move here on Microsoft. With weekly options, guys, that's going to be more than enough. So we've got the squeeze consolidation on the hourly chart. And we're looking for a move up towards 170-ish, right? That's right towards a key level of resistance. It's a likely level where the stock could have some trouble before continuing further. To me, guys, that's more than enough. Now, how do we play this, right? How do we go about getting positioned for a move potentially towards 170? Now, we're going to talk about three different ways of going about this, guys. Two ways you could go about this involve buying naked calls. The third way involves selling options in the opposite direction. Now, as far as buying calls, what I typically do, guys, is I buy calls that are either at the money or in the money. So with Microsoft here, I'd be looking at 165s to 162 and a halfs. The reason being, guys, is that if you go in the in the monies, you can withstand a bit more consolidation. Right? I could theoretically buy a 165, 162 and a half call and not get torn to shreds if the stock just kind of continues to consolidate. Once you start going out the money, especially if you're trading the weeklies, in this case, I would suggest you do trade the weeklies because you're looking for a short-term move, but there is that premium decay you got to think about. So if you're going 165s, I'm sorry, if you start going, you know, 170s, if the stock continues to squeeze, your 170s are losing value with every hour that passes from premium decay. Just how the weeklies work. So my preference, guys, 
is to buy the in the money calls. They're cheap, IV's relatively low. If this thing ends up breaking out, I'm gonna get a good return. And if we just wanna do some half ass options math right now, I could grab those 165s at let's call it 350. If we make that move towards 170, right, they're gonna go two win the money up the chain. As things sit right now, guys, you could grab those for 350. You might be looking at a double. 650 to seven bucks, really no telling how IV could play a role. But all I'm trying to say is that oftentimes, guys, options traders are very you know, attracted to these out the monies because they're fantasizing the big returns that, yeah, they can provide. However, a good ATR, half ATR move on the weekly at the monies, you're going to get your 50 to 100%, guys. That's pretty damn solid. I don't know why you would need more than that necessarily. So that's my way of going about it, mainly because you're going to get a big enough bang for your buck. But I do enjoy the fact, guys, that Microsoft doesn't necessarily have to break out immediately. And if it doesn't, I'm not going to get torn to shreds with premium decay. Now, the more aggressive way, right, you could go about this. And with this you know, particular way of going about it, you got to accept off the bat, guys, that your option's probably going to go to zero. The trade might work, but develop that mindset that this thing's probably going to zero. And if it does, make sure you're okay with that. You could go with the out the money options. You could buy the strike that in this case, right, is the move we're looking for. You know, we're looking for a move towards 170. You know, those 170s guys are going for about a dollar fifty. Again, if it makes a move towards 170, you know, you're looking at about a double. So again, you can double the in the monies, you can double the out the monies. Obviously, there's way more potential on the out the monies but there's also way more potential for them to go to zero pretty damn quick. So it all depends, guys, on, you know, your risk tolerance, your preferences, your personality. But those are two different ways to go about trading a squeeze. If you're really confident that this thing is going to fire and at least make a move towards 170, um, then you can buy the 170 calls. If you catch your move, you're looking at a killer return. My preference, guys, is to buy the in the monies. That way I can sit through some back and forth shit before the move eventually takes place. More importantly... Maybe the move never takes place. At least my option's not going to go all the way to zero like that 170 would. So right there, a few things to think about, right? Risk versus reward is a bit different on either or. All going to come down, guys, to preference. Now, if you're not a fan of buying options or you want to make this a higher probability trade, you can sell options underneath the squeeze in the opposite direction. So we take Microsoft here. We think Microsoft is going to move to the upside. You can buy calls or you can sell puts underneath the squeeze. So with this given setup, guys, right, if I was looking to sell puts, I'd be looking to sell something under 160 bare minimum, right? At the least, sell the 160s. Now, the issue with Microsoft is that there's not biggest premium in the world on the put side. So, right, you're going to have to work with what you get here. You do 10 contracts per side, sell on the 157 and a halfs, 47 cents a credit, you're looking at not a bad risk reward, actually. All right, now we're talking. This isn't bad. Risk 2,000 to make just about, let's round up to make it sound better, 500. That's a pretty solid-ass return. 25% return on risk. I like that. And you short and puts at 157 and a half. Now, the benefit of this, guys, all right, you say, forget all that buying call shit. I don't got time to sit here and babysit that crap then you can get you your 157 and a half put spread where you are going to sell those bad boys. And now think about it. I don't know where that went. Let me try that one more time. 157, 157 and a half. There we go. Now the beauty of this, guys, if you go and you sell these puts instead is that now you don't even really need Microsoft to necessarily break out. You're actually going to make money as long as this thing just doesn't nosedive and start going under 157 and a half. So the squeeze does fire to the upside in your right. You're going to make some good money as those 157 and a half puts, puts are going to lose value as the stock moves in the opposite direction. If Microsoft breaks out and then fails and rolls back into the squeeze, you're still making money, right? It's basic option selling guys I got a lot of videos on this on the page check it out that's one way of going about it you do a put spread 
underneath the squeeze. And again, risk reward is going to be different depending on how much cushion your ass wants. But that's a really easy way to go about it, right? You place that there, guys. You set an alert just in case this thing wants to fire the squeeze in the wrong direction. Otherwise, you're sitting pretty. So few different ways of going about trading the squeeze. But again, guys, it does come down to, you know, timing and overall, you know, market environment. If you have a strong market in a short-term move towards the upside, if your stock is really, as of late strong, you know, short-term momentum to the upside, probably look in the play those hourly squeezes to the upside, right? When the market is weak, your stock is weak overall, vice versa. You guys get where I'm coming from. So as far as this week goes, guys, there's a lot of squeeze opportunities all across the board. Microsoft, I showed you guys the hourly and the 30-minute. And I got a little bit of a list here for the Focus Trade Squad. So let's run through some of these. Apple, Amazon, Google, NVIDIA. Let's check them out. Apple on the hourly. All right, good-looking squeeze, guys. And we can see that momentum is starting to shift towards the upside. Now say you're looking for an Apple move this week, right? You can buy in the monies, you can buy out the monies, but where should we be realistically looking to take profits? What's the average move right now? Apple, 14 points. I would round down, call it 10 to play it safe. That gives us a move, guys, towards 278. That's a sweet-ass move. You catch that move, especially if you're buying those options inside the move, or inside the squeeze, rather, before the move, you're caking out, right? You're really, you're really getting a good return there. So Apple's a good-looking one. Amazon is a good-looking one. Google is starting to get tighter and tighter. We got NVIDIA, bit of an ugly one. Netflix, getting prettier and prettier. So interesting, guys. We got basically every FANG stock, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Google, squeezing on the hourly chart. Could be pretty interesting this week. But in a nutshell, guys, that's the TTM squeeze. I showed you how to have the indicator. I showed you the thought process behind it. But for me personally, why this squeeze is so important is that, you know, it gives me an opportunity to get myself in a position to catch a move while the options are at the cheapest, allowing me to sell into strength. Tesla, again, guys, was the perfect example. A trade that I missed, a kind of trade I can't be missing. No excuses picture perfect if you can accumulate inside the squeeze right if you can have the patience you're limiting your downside risk because you're not buying the option as it's getting all pumped up and pricey and if the move does happen you are eating nicely right you're clearing out big time so that is the ttm squeeze guys throw it onto your charts right put it up here and what i would suggest is part of your daily and nightly preparation go look at some of your favorite names and then run through the five-minute chart, the 15, the 30, the hourly, the four-hour, the daily, the weekly, even the damn monthly, and start looking for squeezes. And at the very least, start monitoring them visually throughout the week. Right? Watch how they work. Watch the options chain. But this is my favorite setup, guys. And before we wrap it up, you know, one thing I like about the squeeze is that there's structure to it. It forces discipline. It forces patience but it also forces a focus on one given setup. If you're a swing trader, you can utilize the squeeze on a monthly chart, a weekly chart, a daily chart. If you're a short-term trader, you can use the four hour, the hourly, right? If you're an intraday trader, you can use the hourly, the 30, the 15. If you're a scalper, you can use the 15, the five minute. It's a versatile setup, guys, but at the end of the day, the structure and the execution is the same thing every single time. You practice the patience to wait for a squeeze to begin, taking into consideration as many things as you can, overall market sentiment, volume, volatility, options, flow, sentiment, blah, 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 you name it. You look to get positioned for a move to the upside or the downside. That's my way of going about it. There are some out there, guys, that wait for the move to begin. There are some out there that wait for the breakout. My preference is to get positioned inside the squeeze. One more thing. Another thing you could do, guys, and this is, you know, a bit of a somewhat advanced option strategy, not too advanced, but you could do a straddle, right? Where you're basically buying a call and a put inside the move, inside the consolidation rather, 
And then if a big squeeze occurs, you're just hoping that the side that wins gains enough value to offset the loss from the losing side and still leave you with a little bit of green. But that is a squeeze, guys. Again, shout out to John Carter, Focus Trades members. Over the next few days, I'm going to have about an hour to an hour and a half lesson on how I go about the squeeze, how I personally scan for it along with Chandler, and how we utilize this setup on a daily basis. Moving forward, for those in the Focus Trades group, this is going to become you know, some required learning. If you're going to rock with the group, this has got to be a setup you got to understand and you got to master. And again, guys, check out John Carter's YouTube channel. Awesome content on the squeeze, on the development of it, the thought process behind it. I can't suggest that enough. But I hope you guys are safe. I hope everybody is healthy. I hope your families are healthy. And I hope you're hanging in here during these crazy times. Until next time, your boys out.